Well, hello, 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 everyone. Mary Cheney, of course. I got the ISC Square team with me here today. And we're going to be talking about the CC cert that many of you that are apprentices are going to be going through. Um, I'm going to let you guys tell me what it is that I'm, we supposed to be doing. I did get my email <laughs> with the, the links and everything like that. So I am going to effectively go off camera and I will let you guys do the kickoff. I'll monitor the um, the chat or the Q&A for any questions, but I'm going to turn it over to ISC Squared. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mary. It's great to be on with everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you might be in the world. My name is Dewan Jones. I'm the director of DEI here at IC2. And we're really happy to be with you today to kick off, as Mary said, the CC certification. Really excited that you are able to join us and that you're going to be a part of this program. We at IC2 are really excited about it. I'm excited about blowing the doors open and getting as many people as we can into the cyber field and are also, as usual, really happy to partner with Mary and Minorities in Cybersecurity to be able to bring this to you. And so today we're going to spend a lot of time just going over the certification, what it is, what it means for you. Um, what the training is going to be all about. And then, of course, we're going to take any questions you have because we want to make sure that you are ready, um, ready to go and that um, you have everything you need to be successful. And with that, I'm also going to introduce my colleagues on with me who are graciously joining us today for this presentation. Um, Romeo, I'll let you introduce yourself. Sure thing. Thanks, Dewan. My name is Romeo Gardner. I am the president and CEO of Nilos. We are a cybersecurity firm based out of Stafford, Virginia. Um, in addition to that, I am also a adjunct at the University of Mary Washington, where I teach the CISSP Certified in Information System Security Professional uh, Exam and Exam Prep. Um, also a supportive ISC2 and the DEI effort. I'm happy to be here to kind of guide you through this journey as it relates to the CC certification. Awesome. Thank you, Romeo. And then also, Alicia, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Alicia Williams. I am the DEI program coordinator here at ISC2. And um, I basically kind of help uh, with the CC initiative and, and moving that forward in our um, goal in the 1 million. So thanks for having me on. All right. Thank you, everyone. And with that, I am going to attempt to share my screen here. So bear with me for a second um, to make sure I get this up and ready to go. Give me a thumbs up if you can, if you can see my screen. Good. Okay. All right. So we're ready to go. So I already pretty much did a introduction, but um, this is really your opportunity to learn about our new entry-level certification, um, which is called the Certified in Cybersecurity Certification, so um, CC for short, um, but it is really um, built for you. It's built for anyone who is thinking about, dreaming about, or already know that they want to be a part of cyber. Um, it's really foundational. And I know Romeo is going to go through really the nuts and bolts of what's involved with it. Um, but we want to, you know, we like to kind of set the stage of this is for you and that you can do this. You got this. It's built for um, if you have no knowledge at all. Um, so you don't have to have a technical background to um, go through this training and to pass. Um, and that's why we built it, because we really um, want those who are not in to get in and to be successful. And so that's what we're going to um, talk about today. And just to you know set the stage for um, a career in cybersecurity, um, I don't I hope that we don't have to tell you that the career is in high demand. I think it's all over media, um, definitely all over government here in the U.S. and in other gov governments across the world um, that we need more professionals. We need um, more um, people who are either entry level or maybe they're switching um, careers and getting into cyber. Uh, we need everyone from every background 
with every um, kind of expertise. And so even if you don't have a technical background, even if you know nothing about the tech world, you can get into cyber and you can have a successful career. And we absolutely need you. And just as a little bit of an introduction to ISC2, um, we just went through a rebrand. And so you might have heard of us referred to as ISC Squared. Um, but now we've simplified that and now we're called ISC2. And um, for those of you that don't know us, we're the largest nonprofit membership association for cybersecurity professionals. And so we have been known, um, as Romeo mentioned, we've been known for the CISSP certification, but we definitely have more. Um, just like the CC, we have other certifications, but we're also not only about certifications. Um, we're also about making sure that you have lifelong learning, um, that you, you know, cyber and digital space is always changing. So we like to make sure that you have everything you need to change with it and to continue to grow in your cyber career. And so we offer um, ongoing training, ongoing education. And then we also are advocate, advocates for the profession. Um, and so we definitely are involved with governments around the world, um, making sure that cyber is a part of the conversation, making sure that um, issues within the cyber profession like diversity um, and equity are at the forefront. And so that is also um, a lot of the work that we do here at ISC2. Um, and then just to, you know, double down on the fact that we need talented people um, to be a part of not only ISC2, but a part of the cyber profession and the cyber ecosystem. Um, we know that right now um, the workforce gap is at 3.4 million people. So across the globe, we need um, that many people to come into the profession and it's going to continue to grow. It, you know, prob I said right now, but probably it's much larger than that as of right now because it continues to grow daily. And having a deep IT experience is not always required. And so um, that's a part of this partnership and why we love doing this is being able to help people understand that you don't have to have a technical background and that there are so many different career tracks and so many different job roles that you can have within cyber. And a lot of people don't know that. And so we want you to be aware that no matter where you're coming from, there's a role and there's um, an opportunity for you. And, um, and back in 2022, we did a global cybersecurity workforce study and we asked um, various uh, job seekers and um, those who were looking for people to fill their jobs, um, what are the most important qualifications that you look for in job seekers? And you can see here that the top things were not technical experience. It was about being a problem solver, being curious and, and ready and eager to learn. Um, of course, IT is, is part of it, but there's so many other things here that hiring managers and companies are looking for. And so we know that there are so many people out there that have these skills, um, which is why we developed the CC um, so that you can build upon what you already have um, and make your way into a successful cyber career. And so with that, I am going to turn it over to Romeo to tell us about the CC. And hopefully you'll be putting your questions in the chat and we will um, hopefully be going through those and making sure we get all of your questions answered. Um, but with that, Romeo, over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Duan. So if you have any questions while I'm going through this, please pop them in the chat. Um, I'll be able to see them and can respond to them pretty quickly. So first off, who would earn the CC? Like, who is this for? Who is this targeted for? As Dewan mentioned, that could be anybody. IT professionals, uh, specifically, I am about number two, right? Career changers. I see you, James. I'm going to answer that in a second. Career changers. I started out as a music education major. So I totally thought I was going to be like the next producer. Think this is my era. So I might be dating myself. This is my era. P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, whoever you want to call him, what name he, whatever name he goes by, I thought I was going to be the next him 
um, making music and all songs and all that stuff. However, it didn't turn out that way. Uh, and I got interested in IT. So ultimately, I am a career changer, right? So I have a, a real, that's that's my focus there, those career changers. But college students, recent, recent college graduates, all of them have the ability to take this certification. James, I saw you mentioned who recognizes the certificate. So that is a very good question, right? So if you take a look at ISC2 as a whole, they have multiple certifications that the industry recognizes. So it was first establishing that name. And once you see the name, the certificate that goes along with it, it's kind of like, okay, this came from a reputable source. So I understand that they put out good and quality material. Um, so far right now, different organizations do recognize the certificate. If you're looking at the government, they have not included it at, included that in the 8140. There's a directive called the 8140 that the government recognizes and wants people to have certain certifications. That has not been added to that list as of yet. However, they are revising that list right now. So I do imagine in the next version that comes out, probably in the next six to nine months, I think that this certification is probably going to be on there. Um, I imagine that it is. Um, I see another question in preparing for the cyber certification. What courses in the apprenticeship syllabus should we focus on? I'll get to that as well. And if you have the security plus, would this still be a certification worth getting to build the knowledge? I'm going to say yes. So if you have the certification um, from a security plus perspective, this is going to build on what you have learned. This will definitely build on it. Some of that stuff will overlap. But there are some pieces that um, I think that the Security Plus may not have covered in detail. So hopefully they answered the question about, about just the certification and the kickoff. We can go ahead and hit the next slide. All righty. So what is this slide about? So if you're looking at taking the certified uh, in cybersecurity, that certification, the top five tasks for entry level. If you're going to be in that entry level space, you're looking at alerts and event monitoring. That could be you working at a security operations center where you're looking at these alerts that are coming in. 35%. Some folks may not like this portion, but the documenting processes and procedures. <laughs> now, that wasn't something that I wanted to do, but I'm glad I had an opportunity to do it because once you begin to document and pro document all those processes and procedures and you're seeing what's happening, once you get past that, now you have the implementation stage. Look, I know this because I wrote it. I'm the person who documented all this stuff. Now I get an opportunity to actually implement it. So Gina, hey, if you say documentation is the best part, go for it. I'm, I'm in your corner for it. Please do. <laughs> um, using scripting language. These are some things that you'll learn along the way that will help you in your job being able to script out certain tasks that you don't have to do on a regular. I specifically wanted to get to this next one, incident response. And I'm just focusing on the entry level things for right now. Um, I'll mention the, the junior level tasks. The incident response. So 28%, that incident response. I mentioned this earlier in the chat. Does anybody know what's happening in Vegas right now? You can place it in the chat. Patricia, you got it, MGM. So I was supposed to be traveling to Vegas um, today. I'm in transit. I'm actually in New Orleans. Last Sunday, there was an, a cyber incident that actually happened and that is continuing to happen right now, the MGM Resorts. Um, so that incident response as an entry level is extremely important. Once we get off this call, I would like for you, if possible, go read about it because you might find some interest in how it first happened. I won't tell you that story. You, you got to have something to read there. <laughs> so you may want to check that out. The last part, 26% um, reporting and developing, producing reports. That's going to be a part of what you do. That's going to be a part of your job as an entry level. Not only entry level, 
junior level and beyond that, even senior level. This is all always going to be a part of that. This won't leave you. Producing reports of what happened. It could be after action reports. It could be a weekly report. It could be a monthly report on the network as a whole, the controls as a whole, what failed, what passed. You're always going to be, be producing something of some value to your customers. So that's the top five from an entry level perspective. If you take a look at the top five from a task and junior level staff, this is more where you're getting into the actual job. Information assurance where you're looking at authentication, privacy, some backup and recovery, disaster recovery, things like that, which is on the exam. Intrusion detection. This is diving into a little bit past just the incident response. The incident response would be, okay, what just happened? The intrusion detection piece, hey, we're trying to find out is this happening on a regular? It could be some digital forensics or things like that. Then moving into the encryption piece and penetration testing. That is my favorite. So if you ever get a chance to, to really get into penetration testing, some ethical hacking or things like that, vulnerability assessments, that is the exciting part for me. That's a, the real exciting part for me. And it does touch on some of these things in the, in the CC exam. As we look at the next slide, what experience is required? No specific prereqs. That's the best part. No specific prereqs. Um, uh, the only prereq I would say is curiosity, which Dewan had mentioned that was number two in that slide, right? When we did that study, that was the second one, curiosity, because that is going to follow you throughout your career. You got to be curious about these types of things. Um, We'd like you to have some sort of IT knowledge so that if someone says you may want to look at that Windows machine, you don't say you mean the actual window pane, not necessarily the Windows machine. So just some IT knowledge about, hey, this is a Windows machine. This could be a Mac machine or something like that. Um, you don't have to have any cybersecurity worker experience. None needed there. And this was the number one that Dewan mentioned earlier, looking for problem solvers with an analytical mindset. And not just in IT, but I don't know about if, if you've seen this within your life. People look to problem solvers. Like if you can solve a problem, doesn't matter whether it's IT, cyber, or, or what have you, if you can solve problems, people want to deal with you. In an IT and cybersecurity space, if you can solve problems, that is really where it's at. And you do have to sometimes think outside the box in order to solve those problems. It's not going to be, hey, it's this formula every single time. You are going to have to think about what would you do if you were trying to break into the system? What would you do if you were trying to make sure that this door, physical access, would fail so that everybody could get in? If you can think like that, then you can remember, okay, this is how I need to protect it. These are some options that I need to take a look at. So steps to 1 million in cybersecurity, certified in cybersecurity. First, sign up as an ISC2 candidate. Yeah, just go there to the website, sign up. You'll get the ability to complete this training in the candidate portal. You want to select uh, which which program you're going after, which would be the CC. So once you sign up as a candidate, then you're going to select the CC. And number three, this is the most important part to me, <laughs> schedule an in-person exam at Pearson View. The reason I say this is, is really important, Think I think about it like this. If you were going to run a marathon, I don't know if you've run one before, if you have, kudos to you. I have not. I was training for a, a half marathon and then all of a sudden I just stopped and went home almost like Forrest Gump and said, I don't want to run anymore. And I try not to run since. <laughs> but if you were going to run a race, if you were going to do something like that, there's a target date already set for you and you would work up to that portion. That's why I'm saying, please sign up for the exams. It could be 90 days. It could be 120 days. It could be six months. Set your time frame of when you're going to take the exam. What that will do is give you a target to focus on. Hit me what you said you did a half marathon. It is a great field. 
De definitely a great feeling. But set that date so you know this is the date I'm actually going to work up to. So if it's September, if you say, you know what, by the 1st of December, I'm going to take the exam. That date is set. And every day you can wake up and know this is when I'm going to take the exam. Versus if you were going to run a half marathon and you just started training and you never knew when you were going to run the race, you'd be running forever. Like you, you'd just be out there running. You just have no idea. Where you're... <laughs> I might, I might do it today or tomorrow. You just have no idea. So please set that date. A couple other steps we're going to take a look at. Take and pass the exam. I got full faith in you. I got full faith in you. You will pass the exam. You can do this, right? So you'll find, you'll schedule a date, find some place, take the exam, agree to the code of ethics that we have there, and then maintain that membership. Um, you'll become a candidate first. Once you pass, then you'll be a full-fledged member. Now, recertification is required every three years. You're going to have to have 45 continuing professional education credits. Now, if you're in the profession, which you will be, chances are you're going to probably go to a conference, read an article. You're going to get opportunities from ISC2 to earn these CPEs over the next three years as well. So there are articles that come out. There are, there are different trainings. There are multiple opportunities for you to earn those CPEs over your three years. So just as you're in the profession, and this is a continuous learning cycle, you will get those 45 CPEs. And then there's an annual maintenance fee, an annual maintenance fee of $50, which by any means, there are other certifications that charge much more, much more. So $50 for this certification, I think is adequate. Uh, some training features. So this is self-paced. This is a, this is a self-paced one, um, specific training that does require some discipline, anything self-paced, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta apply some discipline, but that's why you're here. That's why you showed up. You are disciplined to, if you had the ability, I know some other folks may have wanted to attend right now, but you're here right now. You're here, that's self-discipline in itself. And I know that you will have that self-discipline to go to the through the 14 hours of content. That's 14 hours. Pre and post course assessments. That's the best part of it. You're going to go through this content, assess yourself against this. There are some knowledge checks, into chapter study sheets and whatnot, quizzes. There's even flashcards there. So you have 180 days to complete this course. So I think you could probably do it in less than 180 days. But again, as I, as I mentioned earlier, make sure that you set the date of when you're going to take the exam. The other thing that I wanted to, to bring out uh, in terms of training features, and this is an online self-paced uh, self course, try to socialize this. When I say socialize this, the things that you have learned, talk to a friend a colleague, someone who's in the course, maybe someone who has taken the course, or your partner, it could be a spouse, it could be a pet, about what you've learned. Because if you can explain it to them, then you're on the right journey. Try to explain cryptography. Try to explain different controls. If you're having trouble explaining that, go back to that specific module, go back to that content and see, do I really grasp this? Do I understand this? That's a trick that I've always done for a long time. And I'm sure that my wife is probably tired of me talking to her about certain things because at some point she does shake her head and just say yes. And there are other times where she's asked me a question. I'm like, you know what? That's actually a really good question. I don't know. So I need to go back to this content. So think about socializing that. From our training features, uh, we'll take a look at, this is what the content actually is. It's broken down into five domains. So that first domain, security principles. 26%, I want you to pay attention to the percentage of these things as well. 
because that's an important part. 26%. So the security principles there, principles there, you're going to talk about risk management, different security controls. It's the introduction to those types of things. Um, in addition to, this is the portion where you're going to talk about or learn about the ISC2 code of ethics and governance process. Why is that important? Because that will be on the exam as well. So you do have to learn about the organization that you're getting the certification from. Those types of things will be on the exam. From domain two, this is only 10%. It's an important part. Don't get me wrong just because it's 10%. Business, continuity, disaster recovery, and incident response, those things are very important. But in terms of the amount of questions that you're going to get on the exam, that's only about 10%. That's roughly about 10%. Domain three, another heavy domain here. One of my favorites that focuses on access control access control, where we could be talking about mandatory access control, discretionary access control, um, different types of control concepts where that is physical access versus logical access controls. So understanding those types of security controls, that's going to be a big part of domain three. As we move into domain four, this is like the foundational one that talks about the OSI layer. You may have heard of it. You may not have heard of it. Open source. Um, open session uh, interconnect. So the OSI, those seven layers, you're going to go through those. You're going to have to know those. And once you actually grasp that piece, it's foundational. You'll, you're going to see this in other places as well. So the thing I like about this content as a whole, all of the things that you're going to be learning you're just expand upon those once you get into other courses, because you'll continue to see the OSI model. You'll continue to see security controls. This is a part of just the foundational setting. And then lastly, security operations. So when we say security operations, we're talking about system hardening, some best practices that could be security and awareness training. And believe it or not, there are multiple jobs just centered around security and awareness training. Like there are, you can make a good living just doing security and awareness training. Um, that's an integral part of cybersecurity. And I mean, it's a very important part of cybersecurity. So I have a couple of friends that do that. They're not extremely technical, but you know what? It, they make a living doing that. It's a part of cybersecurity. So I would suggest that as well. I'll take a, a pause right there. Can I answer any questions around the domains one through five, anything about registering, um, the experience or anything like that, specifically for these. I do have a registration question. When do I give them the, the code? Do they just go in and sign up? And then, I mean, the code is for the test or what does that look like? So you should be able to give them the code once they register. Um, okay. as, as soon as they register, you should be able to send that code over to them. And I think they would put that at that point. Well, actually, I think Mary, you should have a link, a UTM yes. link. Uh -huh. So okay. that is what everyone is going to use. Okay. To so sign just up send them the link. Candidate. Yeah. To okay. sign up as a candidate and to end that. We want you to use that specific link just because that's how we track you being from minorities in cybersecurity. Even better. Uh, so it's yeah. So definitely use that link, um, and that'll it'll still it's still the same process, but use that link instead of the direct candidate link. Okay, I'll send that. And that and it's ready, so you can use yeah. it. Yeah. Even better. Any other questions I can answer? Okay, let's move on to the next piece after this, uh, what does the, the exam look, kind of look like? So it's two hours, 100 questions, multiple choice. Once you got multiple choice, I know you can figure this out. So <laughs> generally, generally two of those, two of those answers are going to look a little funny, right? You can, you can rule out two. Two of those will look a little funny. The other two, this is where you're going to have to decipher what you learned because there will be two that just don't really make sense. 
the other two is where the decision point comes in. Uh, you'll need a, a passing score of 700. So that's basically a 70, right? You all got this. Full confidence in your ability to go through this content. I am going to be your resource along this journey. So if you have questions, if there's something that you are unsure about, if you want to socialize what you learn with me, I'm here. We'll talk about it. We'll have a great conversation about it. I am also going to start placing questions in Slack about what did you read? Have you read this? There are different questions that I'm going to pose throughout the week just to see where you're at. <laughs> um, but these should be some fun questions that you can focus on as well. Oh, yep. Discord, my bad. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mary. Yep. Discord. Sorry about that. What other questions can I answer around this portion? None so far? All righty. I'll pass it back over to you, Dewan. All right. Thank you, Romeo. That was great. Um, thank you, everyone, for your time and your questions. Um, that is, you know, all of the content that we have for you today, but um, we tried to make it very easy for you. I, I know Mary is going to share the link, um, the specific link for um, your organization to be able to sign up. But as Romeo said, he's here to help. We're here to help as well um, to make sure you get through the process. And with that, let's go. Okay, so I do really want to share with you, are we at, do we have an hour or 30 minutes? I'm sorry. Um, um, I did want to share to answer a question in regards to how does the um, cyber any map to the CC cert, it's all blended, right? And so the same things are the same concepts that we'll be diving into in cyber are similar that to the CC cert. However, the CC cert is more general. We're going within each module that we're training with the cyber training more in depth with that. And so it's it it's just getting your getting you un, getting you to understand the concepts and then they'll start to repeat and then you'll get it, right? Because those those concepts and, and what we're learning with the CC cert, they're gonna follow you through everything that you're doing right now. So it's just actually getting your mindset around this and say, oh yeah, I remember doing that. Oh yeah, that you know we did that here and there. So it's it's meant to play off each other, right? And so as, you, as you're now taking this journey to become, and, and then our 12 month journey with immersion model and being able to get you guys after 12 months into the profession, these concepts are gonna keep coming up. And the, the more practice you have, the more you'll get it. And so when you're out there, when we, when we find that job in the next six months, cause I'm convinced that we're gonna find all 55 of you a job in the next six months. And when you get on the job, then that's just going to reinforce all the things that you've learned during this journey. So I just wanted to say that I wanted to address that question. Is there anything else that any other questions that you guys have? Oh, I see one in the Q and A. Hold on. There is also an ISC two. I got to give you know I go back to the very beginning. I'm it's going to call it's going to take me a while to go with two instead of square because I've been saying that for so long. But ISC two CC prep on LinkedIn offered by Mike Chappelle that is highly recommended for additional prep. Okay, okay, thank you, Terrence, for that um, statement. Uh, but all that to be said, you have the resources, we have the individuals, we have Romeo, you have your team as 55 of us. Some of us are, you know, very beginning. Some of us are already in the profession and you know, upskilling. We use this team. We use this team to continue to make this transition for you successful. So if that's all we have, uh, we, we don't have to keep you for the whole hour. Anything else? Okay, going once. I, I'll get the link. I have to look in my email, but I'll find it. I promise. <laughs> uh, 
Um, it, they're going twice. Yes, it will be on the YouTube channel. Um, is there a certain time you would like us want us to take the test? We'll talk about that on Saturday. Okay, so I will see you guys on the twenty third, uh, and we'll talk about all of this then. Okay, right. thanks so much. Have a good one. Thanks, Juan. Thanks, Bye, uh, everyone. Alicia. Thanks, Romeo. <laughs>